Hello and welcome to ASME.org's podcast series. This is Chitra Sethi, Managing Editor of ASME.org with Paul Weiss, a distinguished professor of chemistry and biochemistry and of material science and engineering at the University of California, Los Angeles. We are in Minneapolis today at ASME's fourth global conference on nanoengineering for medicine and biology, where Professor Weiss spoke about the advances and challenges that lie ahead in creating, developing, and applying new tools for biology and medicine. Professor Weiss, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. How has nanobiotechnology advanced in the last decade? Well, we've developed new tools for nanotechnology in general, and now we're learning to apply some of those in biotechnology. Really, we take inspiration in the development of these tools from the targeted development of biotechnology tools that resulted in the genome project projects, really, uh, the biotechnology revolution, and we feel the same is possible in nanoscience and nanotechnology, where one set of applications would go towards biology and medicine. What are some of the challenges in creating and developing and applying new tools for you know, biology and medicine? Well, it's always uh, uh, difficult to develop uh, a new way to see, a new way to make, or a new way to measure. And so what we've done in the areas of biology and medicine is target particular problems such as refractory structures of biomolecules and assemblies that have been difficult to get by, for instance, crystallography and nuclear magnetic resonance. Uh, in addition, we hope to go further than those techniques that average structures together. We hope to be able to develop tools that will look at the variations from one molecule or one assembly to the next. And that's still a, a distant prospect, but we know that it's important because of the uh, variations in biological function that we see between individual molecules and assemblies that are nominally identical. Can you tell us more about your work in this area and also its potential applications? Mm -hmm. So our work stems from our uh, long-term interest in being able to go from quantum mechanics to mechanical engineering in experiment theory and simulation in synthetic systems. In those systems, we found that chemically identical molecules had this uh, variation in function that I discussed, and we realized that those same issues uh, and uh, variations uh, were present in biological systems, but we didn't have any way to study them. So now what we've tried to do, uh, first in our lab, applying uh, scanning probe microscopies and advanced tools in uh, sparsity and compressive sensing from applied mathematics, we've tried to develop the ability to measure individual structures we're now carrying that over into other imaging modalities such as cryo transmission electron microscopy to see if we can get away uh, from the averaging that's done now to get atomic resolution structures to the individuals and then we hope to spatially encode functional variations uh, we hope to be able to lower electron beam dose in the case of TEM uh, to get out those uh, individual structures even in uh, systems that are uh, refractory to studies such as membrane-associated proteins, really the target of half of all uh, pharmaceuticals, but uh, nonetheless with fewer than 20 known structures. What is the future outlook for nanobiotech, and would you advise uh, students you know, considering a career in this area to go for it? Well, I think there's a very bright future, and it's, it's a wide-open field. Uh, we have the ability to develop new eyes, which is really what led to the nanoscience and nanotechnology revolutions. We were able to image and manipulate even individual atoms. In our lab and others, we were able to design interactions uh, between molecules so as to control, down to the sub-angstrom level, uh, interactions while simultaneously patterning from that sub-molecular level all the way out to the centimeter scale. So we use those capabilities to control the interactions of materials with the chemical, physical, and biological worlds. At the same time, we need new methods to be able to, to see, if you will, you know, using the term see broadly, uh, biological systems, to understand the placement of chemical functionality, to understand the complex and dynamic interactions, 
and then ultimately to be able to control those. And that'll be important in uh, understanding biological function, but it'll also be important in areas such as therapeutics, where we want to be able to target uh, particular parts of the body, presumably diseased parts, and uh, controllably uh, release uh, drugs that we might not even be able to use uh, if we weren't selective in their placement. So there's, there's still quite a bit to do in terms of understanding the, uh, what we need and uh, how we would uh, be able to produce it. And then you know, beyond that is a whole uh, regulatory problem of how we'll get uh, nanomaterials into the clinic. And for uh, young engineers or students considering a career in this area, what opportunities do you see? Well, I, I, I think there are uh, tremendous opportunities. What one has to do is, is decide what the most interesting and important thing is to do and then go after that. There's a, a tendency that I'll, you know, that I'll give a, a warning on that sometimes engineers tend to produce a widget and then say, someone must have a use for this, <laughs> right? That's not uh, how we want to proceed here, and that's not how the bio biotechnology revolution uh, was uh, made successful. Uh, there were certain needs, such as fast and automated sequencing and synthesis of DNA and proteins, and once those instruments were developed, then they were applied and really changed the world in biology, uh, if not yet in medicine. And so we see those same, uh, we see analogs of those same opportunities in nanotechnology applied to biology and medicine. And so, you know, one can uh, both develop the tools and gain access to them to apply them first to gain control of the uh, of the materials that we're trying to make and the diagnostics uh, that we're trying to develop. Great. Thank you for your time today, Professor Weiss. You're most welcome. Thank you for having me. This is Chitra Sethi, Managing Editor of ASME.org. Thank you for listening.